Do. Model? No. Do you know what it is? Drop the name of it. I said I tell you it's all later, bro. Maybe Are you drinking house. a white monster? What about Marat? Marat is is Pop. dude. You look like you, that's perfect for you. The white monster. The white monster is perfect for you. So we need we need some upgraded right. chairs in this bitch. Okay, I know we're gonna upgrade the chairs. Herman Miller, send me some fucking chairs, please. What the fuck? This motherfucker. Marat, come say hello. <laughs> Hello. No, you don't have to be that close to the. <laughs> you need a couch. The couch is not conducive to like conversation though, because I'm sitting here. How the fuck would I put a couch here? Then it would be weird. The couch has arms. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Mm. What about a love chair? Yeah, a love chair. Love seat. Why would? It... Okay, Marat, get out of here. Baba, I think you do have a little bit of an also uh, because the noise gate is off. Okay, so yeah, this is Billionaire's Row. They build here. the The short and sweet of it so far is that they have like these gross, fucking, massive, exorbitant uh, towers that are somewhat unlivable, mm -hmm. and also have the uh, they they don't even make good use of space. But it's like a statement piece. Most of these billionaires just buy it as an investment vehicle. And they don't even fucking live in it, and Something they're talking about that, yeah. Over 90 stories. What the fuck? To make the construction of a Dude, super dumb. slender tower worth it, you have to make those units really, really, really expensive. What? And that's where real things like Ryan Serhan yeah. come in. That's I are they like a Ryan at the offices of like, yeah. his luxury real estate firm based they just here don't live in them, really. Take me into the world of Billionaire's Row. What's it like, and how is it different to other luxury real estate elsewhere in Manhattan? 57th Street Billionaire's Row is a pretty global demographic. So there's a lot of pied a terre, so part time owners. There's a lot of investor owners. You know, we're selling the penthouse right now, 432 Park, for $169 million US. The owner's never been there. And it's an investment. You know, it's an asset. It's like owning, you know, a Picasso. New York City had status symbol projects prior Whoa. to Billionaire's Row, but never like it does now. Before, you'd say, hey, where do you live? 41 East 66th Street. You'd say, if you own a property, somebody should have to live in it. There's somebody should be so, so there has there should be someone in it. No, no, keep spitting, keep spitting. What? Go that's ahead. All, that's all, wait. Go ahead, dude. No, no, keep <laughs> what spitting. What is that? It just it doesn't make any sense for me to, for there to be a 169 million dollar estate when like you know you got you got a, 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 a maybe like a mother of four, family of four living in downtown Detroit, going to public Detroit school education where the parents are protesting 24 seven, or the teachers are protesting 24 seven that they don't get fucking paid. Or damn, put a teacher in that bitch, you know? But that is literally, it, it's just doing nothing. It would devalue it. That was awesome. It. Well, yeah, no, Mariah is right. Uh, the entire American economy is built around the concept of owning private property. Private property is different than personal property. Mm -hmm. Personal property would be a house like this, for example, but a private yeah. property would be a house that you buy as an investment vehicle. And Americans love utilizing their houses as an investment vehicle. And the government needs to, in every step, of, in every way, shape or form, protect that uh, investment vehicle for them, which is precisely why they rarely ever engage in uh, things that would depreciate the, or uh, decrease the value of houses that people live in, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, you know, Section 8 housing or public housing, social housing, yeah. uh, things like that. These measures that are absolute necessity for people, considering that they are motherfuckers living in the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is insane. We're the richest country on the planet and we got homies living on the fucking street, dying on the streets. Um, so that is that is uh absolutely this is just a, like a larger version of that you're you're getting a snapshot of how fucking terrible it is uh by looking at the worst and some of these buildings are just built as like look look how big my building is and how many millions of dollar apartments it has look how big it is we've commoditized look. living space and we need to exclude people from those spaces that extract surplus value from everyone else is disgusting and gross was that accurate <laughs> Yes, that is well. That's Marxist. What you that part? What that Marxist is saying is no, no, not what he was saying. But like the oh, look at my building. It's so large. Yeah, it I mean that's so just one other element of that for sure. Look, but 
most normal human beings that like practice even a fraction of empathy recognize what uh, Ali is saying here is not all that different from. Do you know what I heard? What'd you hear? The Empire State Building was the dude that like owned the Empire State Building was in competition with somebody that owned another building in New York. And so when I, I chat, maybe some of you guys can help me here. But when somebody they is one of the, somebody outbuilt the Empire State Building. And so the Empire State Building was like, you know what? We're going to just add more. We're going to do an extension. Like, I want they my building to be bigger. To the Chrysler yeah. Building? Is that true? And it cost it. It was like a, a multi-million dollar project or some shit. Ju just for the sake of like, damn, dude. I th this bu Our building needs to be bigger. Didn't, didn't you hear that uh, when after 9-11, Trump Tower was the tallest building in New York? Dude? Yeah, Donald Trump <laughs> famously... <laughs> Donald Trump famously uh, on a phone call, I think to a, like a radio station or something, was like, you know, 9-11, very bad, very tragic, but right. also made my tower, the Trump Tower, the he largest radio tower station? in Wall Street, believe me, yeah. <laughs> the biggest tower, the tallest tower. I mean, here, I mean, here, here, here. I have such a tall tower. You know, they're the tallest now. 9-11 um, is shame, but... 20 years after 9-11, we can still hear Donald Trump's reaction to terrorist attacks. Yeah. What a shame. Wait, where the fuck is the video? <laughs> Chad, do you have the video? I can't. It's not showing for some reason here. Yeah, he called into a TV station, WWOR. Oh. And, and you know, he, he basically said, 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan and it's actually it was before the World Trade Center was the tallest and then when they built the World Trade Center it became known as the second tallest pauses and now it's the tallest The real shame is chat can't speak the only True. Here, 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 here. Is cute. Donald, uh, you have one of the landmark buildings down in the financial district, 40 Wall Street. Uh, did you have any damage, or did you know what, what's happened down there? Well, it was an amazing phone call I made. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan, and, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest, and now it's the tallest. And I just spoke to my Donald. Uh, I hope the afterlife exists. By, by the way, to glad to do a lot. Arkadan Island do the hard shit do your heaven is also yeah, you can show on the noise gate. There's no noise gate, so if mom and dad are gonna like uh, converse, I'm just letting you know they can hear everything. Can you go tell them? Please. With it, copy the couple of the not. Yeah, my studio sign. I said this on my streamer day. I hope the afterlife exists. Inshallah. Oh, so that Donald Trump can rot in hell, is that what you're saying? <laughs> so that a lot of people could rot in hell. Yeah, like I, I am really hoping. I like, I'm not a firm believer, but like, I hope it exists. No kizzy. No kizzy. Like, you want to be on this earth and be like, yeah, I just don't really give a fuck about other people or like, you know, anything in general, and I'm just gonna live my life out to the fullest. Ooh, yeah, I'm a rock star. Yeah, like. Uh, <laughs> inshallah, no kizzy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's crazy though. That is some like just straight up. <laughs> that was our president. Woo! Let's keep going. Cool. Where's that? Now you can say, where do you live? 432? Ah, it's a brand, right? It's like a Birkin bag. Where do you live? 157? Where do you live? 111? Where do you live? 220? You don't even. Serenoid, thank you for the five get the subs. By the way, that's a good reminder that five people will no longer see the top of the hour ad break right now because of Serenoid. But it's coming. I totally forgot because uh, Myth walked in. But at the top of the hour, we have a 60 second ad break. If you want an uninterrupted broadcasting experience, though, you can subscribe or be lucky to be one of the lucky people that Serenoid gifted a sub to, or make your own luck, or make your own luck for free with a Twitch Prime that is free. Have you been playing Tarkov? No. You never played Tarkov? Or... I played Tarkov before like once or twice, but I haven't played it. I, haven't so, I, I, I was fucking bopping. I was bopping heads last night. Yeah? Headshots only, baby. Will's been wanting to play. Yeah, um, we can play that before, uh, maybe before, uh, what do you call it? Peggy shows up because he's not a, he's a, he's a controller gamer, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 
Maybe. No, for a little dark. It's like fucking annoying though, because like everyone, you were memeing about like the gaming thing, like oh he like lured me in with gaming, and <laughs> now so many dummies in the chat are like, come on, gaming when, gaming when? It's like yeah, we're gonna fucking play <laughs> video games today. Don't worry, okay? Chat, Can you chill I was out? Trolling. Can you chill out? <laughs> okay, let's keep going. You don't even have to say where it is. You just say the number. Just behind me over there are the massive cast iron testicles of the Wall Street Bull. Now, they represent money, and of course, <laughs> none of this would be possible without money. Loads and loads and loads of money. So much money, in fact, that it's actually helping transform housing from its most basic function of providing shelter into a lucrative investment strategy. Now, to be clear, homeownership's always been one of the best ways to build Probably. wealth, and that opportunity hasn't been made equal to everyone. But Billionaire's Row takes things to a whole new level, and has essentially created an entirely new asset class of luxury real estate. That's partly because there's simply a lot more money to go around. The amount of money being invested around the world has grown massively, creating what some researchers call a giant pool of cash. But alongside this explosion of global wealth, wealth inequality has grown too. A smaller slice of people now control a bigger share of the world's money, and that means the people at the top have bigger and bigger bank accounts. One place to put some of that money? Well, luxury real estate, like the units on Billionaire's Row. And this um, is historically unprecedented. The amount of very wealthy people with that money coming into the built environment, it mutates the built environment, it mutates architecture. Matthew Souls has thought That's a crazy. lot about this. In fact, he wrote a whole book on how wealth is reshaping our buildings. Architecture is under a tremendous amount of pressure to satisfy the investment kind of absorption role and that's where something like Billionaire's Row comes into being. To really understand... How do you get rid of places like this? I mean, the kind, gentle, and maybe... Uh, the... The... The, <sighs> the utopian... <laughs> the utopian uh, argument is by taxing people slowly but surely, raising taxes, and, and making it so unaffordable to, like, commodify housing which should be seen as like a necessary resource for survival because shelter is necessary for survival uh so that like people can't utilize this as an investment vehicle um and then the more realistic uh argument is that uh building a solid base of labor momentum and and radicalizing the working class once again with class consciousness to a degree where uh if necessary uh, you know, we reorganize our economy in a way that uh, doesn't create such incredible wealth hoarding and su uh, create such uh, uh, disparate outcomes by design like capitalism does. And the way to do that is, unfortunately, the reality is through labor militancy because we have examples, numerous historical examples, time and time again, where uh, uh, the people in positions of power, whether they were monarchs or capital owners themselves throughout the time have refused to give up that power that they currently have without any sort of, uh, you know, threat of violence or violence in general. Like, that's just how it is.